All right, guys, so we're going to knock out this whole topic of aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Or really, it's aerobic respiration and anaerobic fermentation. That would be it. the official way. It's aerobic and anaerobic metabolism, okay? Um, I'm not going to go through all the crazy details. This is more big picture for today, okay? So we're going to start with you know, basically eating carbohydrates. What did we say earlier? We eat carbohydrates, we break those carbohydrates down into what? Glucose. Glucose. So our first pathway is gonna be glycolysis, okay? Glycolysis is the pathway to break down glucose, okay? So just kinda kinda start here, okay? This is glycolysis, it is, and, and, and you'll see in the book, I mean, it's, it's got a bunch of steps. If you go into chemistry uh, or biochemistry, you're going to learn a lot more about, you know, the, the intimate and very detailed steps of glycolysis, okay? But for us today, we're thinking big picture. You know, how does, you know, this aerobic and anaerobic metabolism work? I and mean, that's the big picture for today. So really, we've eaten carbohydrates. It doesn't really matter what they are. They're going to get broken down or converted, depending on what it is. To glucose so that's the start of our pathway okay as we're starting with glucose it happens to be a six carbon molecule not that that's the biggest deal in the world but that's what glucose is okay glucose then is going to be broken down okay if you go through the whole entire pathway going to go through many, uh, a series of steps many steps and we're going to wind up getting to pyruvic acids or you know again we could say pyruvate they're both three carbon so you get three carbon pyruvic acid or pyruvate get another three carbon pyruvic acid or pyruvate however you want to word it I think the book calls it pyruvate the newest edition but it's pyruvic acid okay so that's what we're gonna wind up with in glycolysis so we're gonna go over some key things about glycolysis that makes it really unique so we actually um, make four ATP from glycolysis, okay? And we're gonna talk about that. Now the catch to that is that it takes two ATP to run glycolysis, okay? So you only net how many? Two, right? That's all you get from it. So one of the things we're gonna say about it, we can just kind of write it here, is that we're going to net 2 ATP. That's all we get from this step. In case you don't know it, that's not really considered a whole lot, okay? But that's what we net from it every time our uh, cell goes through this. Now, a couple key things about glycolysis, there's no oxygen required for it, which means if we're in aerobic metabolism, meaning we're breathing oxygen, which by the way, majority of our cells in our body are going to require oxygen, right? So most of the time, we should be in aerobic respiration. We're still running glycolysis. So if we're in aerobic respiration, we're doing glycolysis. If we're in anaerobic fermentation, are we still doing glycolysis? Yes. Yes. Doesn't matter, right? That's the whole point. With or without oxygen, it doesn't matter. It's not required. So our body's going to do this, period, no matter what. Does that make sense? Uh, another thing is that it occurs in the cytoplasm okay, of the cell, okay? not in the mitochondria. Okay, a lot of people say, oh, the mitochondria is a powerhouse, which is true. It makes the majority of ATP, but it does not make all of it. Okay? There's some ATP, you know, not a lot, but there's some made in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay? And then it makes, which we'll talk about more later, it makes some... NADH. Okay, and you're going to say, well, what is that? Well, you'll see later uh, that we're going to use the electrons from this in the electron transport chain. So the fact that it makes NADH kind of redeems itself a little bit um, from this low ATP number. Okay, so just, just the fact that that makes this NADH is a good thing. Okay, so we'll talk more about that later but that really is glycolysis so we're always doing it you figure we're always doing glycolysis right it's taking in carbohydrates breaking them down to glucose and then to pyruvic acid and we're making two ATP okay um, 
pretty much all the cells in the body need aerobic respiration, uh, meaning they need oxygen to properly function. But there are some cells that don't need it. Well, the one cell that doesn't need it, many remember the one cell that doesn't need, we mentioned it just like a week ago, it doesn't need uh, aerobic respiration in order to basically function. Anybody remember the cell inside the body? Meaning, and by the way, this cell's only gonna do glycolysis because that's all it basically can do, right? It's gonna get its ATP strictly from this, and that is red blood cells, okay? They're anaerobic. Uh, and then cancer cells are anaerobic. They operate, you know, basically uh, glycolysis essentially only, and then the rest of the anaerobic pathway, which we're gonna talk about next. So we'll highlight um, the next step here. If we, if we have no oxygen, so we're without oxygen, okay? We'll do glycolysis, because it doesn't matter. We're all, we'll, then we'll also take these two pyruvic acid and we'll continue through you know, anaerobic, we'll just write it down here, anaerobic fermentation. Right, we're in anaerobic fermentation. We're gonna basically take these two pyruvic acid and convert them, we'll just put convert to two lactic acids. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. These get converted to two lactic acids. <clears throat> that is again, if oxygen's not present. Okay, again, this would essentially be the entire pathway, okay, for a cancer cell. Okay, cancer cells do not need oxygen uh, and don't, don't, don't use it, so to speak, right? They, they, they thrive on glucose. That's all they need to survive. Uh, same with our red blood cells. So, what do we get from this pathway? That's what we wind up with, is two lactic acids. We've mentioned lactic acid before. What does lactic acid give our bodies? What do we feel? What do we feel with uh, lactic acid? We mentioned it the other day, right? When our cells shift over here, an aerobic cell shifts over to anaerobic fermentation, what happens? You know, what's that? Right, we're gonna get just the we're gonna get pain and fatigue, right? So that's what we're gonna get with lactic acid. It causes pain and fatigue. Okay, I mean it's not a it's 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 gonna you know for a cell that requires oxygen, um, that's that's been shifted over to the anaerobic side, they're gonna run out of steam, right? So we're gonna get pain and fatigue, and we're gonna get no. ATP down in this little step. We don't get any ATP from this. So what is our total then? If we go down here and look at the total for the anaerobic side, what's our total ATP? You tell me, total ATP for anaerobic side. Minus two. Two. Right, correct, so two ATP. Right, because we're gonna go from here all the way down. So we get two ATP. Because again, a uh, red blood cell operates on this pathway and it has to have some ATP, right? So it's getting the two ATP. Cancer cells have to have some ATP to survive, right? It's getting the two from up here. It just right? doesn't make it. it. It just doesn't use the aerobic pathway that we're uh, in, in the mitochondria, right? To, to make ATP. So it's gonna use just this pathway and obviously that's enough, okay? So then, that's our anaerobic pathway, so with oxygen, so we'll put with oxygen, okay, we're obviously going to do aerobic respiration. Okay, and that's gonna be, we'll put it like this, Aerobic respiration is going to start us off in a cycle called Krebs cycle. It can also be called, we'll just put it, and I'll put it right here, citric acid cycle because it starts with that. Krebs is a guy's name, Hans Krebs. He discovered this cycle. I think most, most of the time it's pretty much called Krebs, but you might see it as citric acid cycle. So in this case, 
This is what's going to be key now. We're going into aerobic respiration, which again, we said the majority of our cells in our body require this, but you have to be taking in oxygen to do it, correct? Aerobic respiration is going to be in, we'll just put it up here, in the mitochondria of the cell, okay? That's, this is all going to be in the mitochondria of the cell, okay? So what's Krebs cycle is going to do is it's basically going to take the 2-pyruvic acid, right, and go through a, a literal cycle, and you're going to see a whole bunch of conversions again, and we're going to wind up with some more stuff. So what does Krebs wind us up with? So we know, we know a few things, right? We know we need oxygen to, 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 to shift to the aerobic side and run Krebs cycle. We also know it occurs in the mitochondria. I mean, that's a key thing, right? Um, it's going to produce lots of NADH. Okay, we said that's a good thing, right? And FADH2. We're gonna get a lot of this. So what in the world is that? We said we'll see it in just a little bit. That's a big benefit of Krebs cycle. We get a lot of these two um, molecules that are gonna give us a lot of really good electrons for the electron transport chain. What's interesting is NADH comes from niacin. FADH2 is made from riboflavin. So that's B3 and B2, that's where we get these. That's why we're talking about vitamins are necessary for the metabolic pathway. So then, what else do we get from Krebs cycle? Well, we get two ATP. Not impressive. Again, keep in mind, all these numbers are based on the one glucose molecule. So for every glucose molecule, two ATP again, over here under Krebs. But, again, the fact that it makes all this NADH and FADH2 is gonna redeem itself and make it uh, a lot more helpful, okay? So that's gonna be the key things about Krebs that we're just kind of, you know, looking at big picture again. Then from Krebs, where do we go? We finish off, I'm just gonna abbreviate, the ETC. Well, we can write it, I guess, electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is where we go. And we're gonna take, we'll just write it here, it's gonna use the electrons, we'll just abbreviate because we're running out of room here. We're going to use the electrons, okay, it's an electron, right? Use the electrons from the NADH and FADH2 to make lots of ATP, okay? Now the question is how much ATP? Our bodies under the aerobic side can make a lot of ATP. So you're going to see it here. It can make up to, and this is going to be the key thing, up to 34 ATP. The key word is up to, okay? That's, there's different amounts of ATP that can be made. Uh, it's not like a, like a, you know, uh, a nailed down figure. But we're going to say our total under the, under the aerobic side is going to be a lot better. What's going to be our total ATP? Again, we're going to say up to how much? 30. How much total? Was it 36? No, more than that. 38. 38, right? You add up all of it, it's 38. So that's as much uh, total as we're going to get. And the reason we get so much down here in the electron transport chain is we've used the NADH and FDH2's electrons to make all this ATP, okay? So in a nutshell, that's our basic you know, understanding of the aerobic and anaerobic sides of metabolism. Okay, any questions?